Hi, now we are discussing IR and Raman spectroscopies as in the part of our important lectures in Chemasus Data Online. So here, IR and Raman spectroscopies are called as vibration spectroscopies because they work based on the vibrations of the molecule. Okay, right. And uh, I want to say one thing that many aspirants uh, wants to solve more and more examples and they want to practice on examples but without knowing okay without knowing the proper concept one cannot get accurate answer in the examinations so I want to say that please learn concept efficiently and then go for the practicing examples that gives you that produce accurate results and you get uh, your success in your exam okay right and please keep these points in your mind now so uh, come to the point directly here uh, just look at here we have an equation that is do mu by do r if not equal to zero okay do mu by do r if not equals to zero that is IR active okay right and in this equation so mu means it is dipole moment so here do mu means the differential change in dipole moment okay so that indicates the change in dipole mu indicates change in dipole moment and in this R indicates the change in bond length during vibration of the molecule okay right that means uh, simply do r indicates change in bond length during the vibration of the molecule after getting energy right so whenever do mu by do r if not equal to zero then that vibration vibration is ir active in the particular molecule okay that means if dipole moment is changed and if r if r is changed then there is uh, that they are they are equal that means if uh, uh, the change in dipole moment and change in R if equals to zero that is IR inactive okay right that means the change in dipole moment and the change in uh, distance between the atoms atoms must be not equal to be IR active okay right now comes to this equation that is do alpha by do R if not equal to zero that is Raman active okay Raman active. So in this uh, alpha indicates polarization. That means do alpha means change in polarization and do R same change in bond length during the vibration of molecule. Okay. So do alpha by do R if not equal to zero then that particular vibration of the molecule is Raman active. Okay. So zero indicates simply equilibrium distance between the two atoms of the molecule which undergoes vibration. Okay. Right. If uh, that equilibrium distance is changed during this uh, uh, change in dipole moment and uh, di uh, the, sorry, a uh, polarization, so that leads to Raman activity. Okay. So if the change in polarization and if the change in uh, distance, if they are if they are equal, so that leads to zero, then Raman inactive. Okay. Right. Now selection rules for IR and Raman we have the change in uh, vibrations that is delta V equals to plus or minus 1 okay right so some important points here all ionic molecules are Raman inactive okay all ionic molecules are Raman inactive and uh, IR active so keep this point in your mind now all covalent compounds are active in both IR and Raman okay and now here is an interesting example HCl. HCl in aqueous solution it is Raman inactive so that is in aqueous solution but in benzene HCl is Raman active how so if you comes to the points we need to learn first thing what is dipole moment okay so dipole moment mu equals to what so mu e, mu equals dipole moment in equals to the product of the product of charge separation okay the product of uh, charge separation and amount of charge okay so that is simply mu dipole moment what is that the product of charge separation between the atoms of the molecule uh, and the amount of charge on them 
okay so that that gives dipole moment simply so if we take uh, two atoms a and b are connected with a bond okay if b is more electronegative than a what happens b attracts electrons or drags electrons towards b or on to the b okay so then that means completely electron attracted from a to b so then if they form a plus charge and b minus charge the, that means they form ions whenever the electronegativity difference is more in between the two atoms which are connected with a bond okay so here is the formation of uh, dipole moment okay so here is the chance of formation of dipole moment and that's why the uh, all ionic molecules are simply ir active okay right now comes to the polarization so what is polarization then so if you consider polarization if you consider covalent compounds for example if two compounds a and a are connected okay with a bond right and then the electronegativity difference are very very less if uh, for a and for these two atoms consider okay so then what happens if the slightest uh, electronegative atom that means if uh, this a star have slightest electron uh, more electronegativity than this a then what happens it tries to drag electron from a towards this okay so that that means what what happens so this a star in the bond it attracts electrons towards a star from the a but it doesn't completely drag electrons towards it because it is unable to uh, drag electrons from a completely because it is not more electronegative okay so this slight electronegativity differences make the dragging of electrons from one atom to another atom and there is the formation of partial charge on them a partial charge with uh, b in under a star partial uh, sorry partial plus and here is positive charge on it okay so this partial charge separation indicates polarization okay so this polarization in completely so if we consider in covalent compounds so this polarization is possible that's why ir active and uh, ir active in both uh, sorry ir active and roman active okay because uh, this polarization changes based on the bond distances okay so that's why in covalent compounds ir active and also and the raman active uh, raman active how ir active is possible uh, in uh, covalent compounds whenever the bond changes that means uh, for example asymmetric sim uh, asymmetric changes um, are possible okay uh, if in the given molecule a covalent compound so there is a chance of raman active because there is a change in uh, dipole moment whenever the geometry changes the dipole moment uh, uh, has the possibility to change so that's why ir active okay so covalent compounds are both ir active and roman active okay now if you consider hcl as we said before so in aqueous solution hcl completely gets ionized h plus and cl minus okay so that's why uh, in aqueous solution uh, hcl is ir active but not raman active simply raman inactive but in benzene so benzene is not polar solvent so that's why hcl doesn't completely ionize so that's why it gets in uh, simply polarization so that leads to raman active okay raman active so this is a uh, point we need to consider now another important thing so if we give energy to the particular uh, molecule which is vibrationally active okay what happens so it transforms from a ground state a vibrational energy level to another higher energy levels okay so if uh, when we give energy to the particular uh, vibrationally active molecule so it transforms from v0 to if it transform from, uh, from v0 to v1 okay if v0 to v1 v1 then Uh, that transition is called fundamental transition and the form band formed by that in the uh, graph it is called as fundamental band okay so what is the point we need to consider in this uh, example so here if the transition takes place from v0 to v1 so we can call it as fundamental transition and the band appeared is fundamental band for it okay and next one overtone so whenever a molecule transform transform from from v0 to v2 by escaping or by overjumping from uh, v1 okay that means 
from V0 to if directly enters uh, higher energy level V2 uh, other than V1. Okay, so that is simply considered as overtone. Okay, and next one, another example, another one is whenever the molecule excited from V1 energy level, V1 vibrational level. That means not from the ground ground vibration level. That means not from V0. If V12, V uh, another highest. Uh, uh, energy levels if uh, a molecule transforms so that is simply considered as hot band okay so here is uh, another important uh, term